Logos and Trivical podcast. I'm Chance Lunsford. I'm also Logos and Trivical. Maybe you're also Logos and Trivical. I'll let you try and figure it out. While I do, let me introduce, or should I say reintroduce, today's special guest. I have with me the man, the man with the plan, and the universe behind him. <laughs> Part it's, of it. Uh, that's right. That's right. It's my friend and my uh, second time appearing guest, Johnny Noble, Johnny Noble Body, LLC. What's up, man? Welcome back. Glad to have you. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. How are you, man? I'm very good. When, when did we do the first one? Spring? Mm -hmm. Like April, May, I think. I think April. I think end of uh, April. It feels like a, like a lifetime ago. Yeah, it, do, it does to me too. I mean, I know you're very busy, just kind of like a constant state of busyness where busy is maybe not the right word, but engaged in meaningful, in meaningful conduct. And I feel much the same. I mean, this is what the 90th episode of this podcast, I think. Wow. And you know, plus, plus my job, plus my other stuff and everything. So I feel, I feel like in my life and it sounds like from the last time we talked and paying attention to what you're doing in yours, that um, it's not so much finding things to fill the space so much as it is, um, you know, engaging in a process of triage to decide which parts of your life you need to save. Cause there's only so many hours in the day and so many times you can cheat that. So I guess I wonder what's, uh, what's life been like on this, on this crazy, crazy engagement and you know this new journey that you're on and how you found this passion so you dive right in but i wonder how you manage things and and keep that momentum rolling when you say the word triage first of all i always picture a plane crash with sh just shit strewn everywhere <laughs> um and that's what it feels like some days um i I really enjoy where, as harrowing as it is some days, I really enjoy where I'm at because I know I belong here. And as difficult as some of, some of the days are trying to pull this off at the level that I want to um, and that I plan to, um, I, I just, I always remind myself that I'm where I'm supposed to be and it's just part of the test or part of the journey. Um, I think I, I added something else to my plate too. I don't know if we talked about this um, and we're still kind of keeping it a secret. I'm sure it's trickling out here and there, but I was approached by somebody um, in March is the first time we talked about it to formulate a product and ramp up a, a totally separate company. So there's, and we pulled it off. We, um, from the first conversation in March until uh, we had a live website with a branded product in bottles with labels for sale was mid to later July. Um, I mean, we, we got it done. So, so that was in addition to everything with Noble Body. Um, but, you know, it's so closely intertwined as far as branding and marketing and formulation and products and um i i went for it um i i had my doubts as to is it even physically doable with the time frame with everything else that i have going on but i i went for it anyway and so far so good it's gone pretty great we're going to announce it here at some point um but we're still kind of keeping it on the hush um, and then I just launched another product um, Friday for Noble Body, the, the body oil that I've been working for two years on. So it's been an incredibly busy stretch. Um, but you know what? It, once again, it just feels right. So I, I, no complaints. It's just part of the process. Huh. Here's, a, here's a thing I've been thinking about. And, you know, I just listened to you talk about how you sort of develop these areas of expertise and then doors open to you because of that expertise and, and your dedication to it. And you wonder at first, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but you look at it and you think about it and you decide, well, it's already sort of like just expanding a little bit on what I'm already doing. Maybe I could make this work and, and you just kind of choose in with faith and then things start happening and a lot faster than people might expect. So my question is, I guess, is, 
you, you're able to see those opportunities and to trust in yourself and to have faith in yourself that you're going to make it happen once you've waited out and decided that's what's going to work for you. And I wonder, you lived a lot of life before you started Noble Body. You lived a lot of life before you decided this is the thing that I'm going to do right now. And it, and it was, you know, and it was a very different life to the one you're leading right now. And I guess I wonder if you feel like, because a lot of kids are 20 something now and they want to jump into something like this. And they're like, you know, I'm never even going to work a fucking job. I'm just going to jump into my brand right now. And that's going to be what I'm going to be. And I'm never like never looking back because that's what the internet told me I could do. And, and maybe, <laughs> maybe it isn't. And you know, some of them make it, but most don't. And I guess I wonder if you in particular, and if most people in general sort of need that life experience to be able to trust or have faith in themselves. And then also to have the ability to make the decisions that, you know, kind of, fill you with that faith when you're when you're actually making them yeah uh you know i i think it's there's a there's kind of a duality going on all the stuff that i've done and, and there's a lot i mean i've done a lot of different things in a lot of different places and i've done incredibly stupid shit to incredibly great stuff <laughs> it's just the reality of it and then the the most interesting part of it was reaching a point later in life when I wanted to completely change my life. And, and that in itself it was a considerable challenge up here to say, well, I should be on the fucking golf course. I don't even golf, but you know, all of my peers are getting softer, sicker, complacent, and I was looking around watching, you know, I'm 56. I was looking around watching people just die around me and die inside before they're even dead. Yeah. And obviously it was a very tough decision. I went from being a partner in a law firm, very stable corner office, making a bunch of money, trial attorney to something that I should have done in my 20s or 30s. That's what it felt like. But then as I was doing it, I thought, you know what, that's, that's a – that's a limiting belief that I'm not even going to let creep into my head because I don't care how old I am. I have tons of life left. I'm in fantastic condition. I lift weights five times a week. Um, I have an energy level that's off the charts right now because I, it's all positive. It just feels like I'm supposed to be doing what I'm doing. Um, so any anybody that says oh i can't do this or i shouldn't do this or it, it's you're just limiting yourself with your potential um if you have some sort of a you know a passion or an interest or whatever it is from you know auto parts to natural oils i mean just get into it and start and then don't stop and then as you're going along things will find you um that's what happened with this other product it just it just literally fell in my lap and um it's, I'm working with one of the more well-known e-commerce marketers that we run into on Twitter. Um, and it just made perfect sense to me. And then as we started doing it, I was shocked at how well we worked together. Um, you know, we're from two different places, two different times, you know, younger guy, older guy, two different places in the world. And we have a pretty fantastic idea going right now that, has exceeded my expectations already. So, but you'll never find anything out unless you get your ass in gear and then stay in gear. And the biggest, I always remind myself, the biggest mistakes I've made in my life are not when I took chances or, or did things that were maybe out of the ordinary or um, unusual. It's when I didn't do anything or when I got complacent or when I got lazy or when I limited myself. And I mean, I feel right now like I want to live until Hallie's Comet comes around again, at least. That's how I, and I want to be healthy and sentient when that day arrives and I'll be 98. I don't know what the year is. That's a little too math heavy for me right now. But that's a, that's a thumbnail of where my head is at right now with, um, with these products and these companies because when I'm working with these natural compounds now, I just, it comes to me every day. This is where I should be. And um, it's hard to even explain how it happened, but it just kind of, I just kind of morphed into it. It's like, it's like the universe pulled me into it. I didn't find it. It found me is the conclusion I've come to even just in the last few weeks. 
Okay, so <clears throat> what you just talked about, there's some very important things in there that I that I find myself consistently sort of promoting out there into the world, just speaking these ideas out there. And, and a lot of the people who come on this podcast, when I'm pressing them about their sort of <clears throat> mechanism of, of purpose, or you know, that it, it seems to be the case that there's a lot of stuff within a person that they're interested in. And, you know, you might not find the, like the one where you just find it and you go click, 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 click. Oh, everything's in alignment. My purpose, my principles, my desires, my family, my everything. I'm just going to run with this. And it's clear. It's like, well, okay. I like this thing right now. I have five things in my life that I do consistently that I enjoy. Okay. And I try to find the time. What if I could turn one of those into my job? Okay. I'm going to do that. And, and um, let me choose from among these five things that I like to find the one that I can replace my income with the best that I think, a little market research. Okay. Now I go with it and I run with it. And, and you said, you know, just keep going. And that's what, and that's what I want to get to is people choose a thing and there is a business for every single thing out there that you can imagine. And the only difference between you and the person that you look up to in that business is they decided to, and then kept going and had the humility to accept when they were wrong along the way. And it's just, it's just that if you know what you want and you go for it and you fix your mistakes, it's just a matter of between here and there, you just have to keep that attitude consistently is what I see and what I see a lot of people saying. And so I guess to kick it back to you and to maybe like approach that idea from another or like an oblique angle is when you, you know, when you say that, when I say that, I say that because I had a thing in my life a bunch of things in my life that were destroying me and, and everything I touch. And then I had to get them out of my life when I knew I had to. And then I just kept going and did that. And now I'm approaching the place where I'm finding the things that I like because I feel like I've come out of that place and I want to keep going. And I say, keep going on the things you believe in. And I don't have that much evidence. I just know because I keep talking to people like you and because I keep seeing things in my life that I'm on the right path. And you just said that a bunch of times too. You know, I feel like it's come to me. Like I, I'm on the right path. And so things are just being landed in my lap, but that doesn't happen immediately. And I guess I'm wondering, how do you, how do you help people get over that hump between when you choose into something and when you start seeing the results of staying consistently on that path where things do just happen in alignment with what you want because you've been working towards it for so long? How do you get past the, the gap? Oh, oh man. You know, that, that's depending on what your path is. And it, it could be anything from sports, boxing, um, you know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu to an artist or whatever. If you want to go to law school, whatever, whatever it is. Um, I have a really good friend starting law school at, um, this is a good story, actually. Uh, my friend Kenny, he uh, was in the Marines. Well, he's a Marine. Um, was honorably discharged. I actually met him at a, my most fascinating vortex dive bar that you can imagine that has just the um, most interesting and unusual cross-section of personalities I've encountered in a very long time in my life. Anyway, I met Kenny there. Did, can I? Did yes. Kenny, did Kenny break his back? No, Ken, I don't think so. No, Kenny didn't break his a back. Huge bodybuilder? Uh, Kenny is a very, very large guy. He's, I don't know, six, four, 300 pounds. Um, and he's like a big gentle giant. We, we just because, hit it off. Immediately. Because I, I knew a Kenny who was in the Marines and the special forces and he broke his back and was my boxing coach for some time. <laughs> oh, wow. That's giant bodybuilder guy. So I just, I was like, is that, is that, is that yeah, that'd be, now that would be weird. Um, but anyway, I, I started talking to Kenny one night and, um, you know, here I am a guy that practiced law for 20 plus years with quite a bit of success and enjoyment for a long time. And I'm sitting there at the bar and he's on his laptop and I could tell he was doing something legal. I saw a big heading of some law school. I forget which one it was. Um, he was actually applying to law schools. This is a ways back eight months ago, something like that. And he ended up getting a full ride to Loyola Law School in Chicago and full like everything, which is pretty unusual. He's a really smart, engaging guy. So we were talking a lot about um, 
how I morphed from that into what I'm doing now. He actually uses my beard oil too. He loves it. Um, how he morphed, how I morphed into this and how he's going into where I was. Um, I actually gave him my, my Black's Law Dictionary that I used when I was in law school, the, you know, hardbound Black's Law Dictionary. It was just sitting in a closet. Um, and we talked a lot about where his path is leading him versus where mine took me. And he's going to be treading over parts of my path that many people have tread over. Um, it's, it's just a fascinating study because it, what it comes down to is it's a personal journey for everyone. And there aren't going to be clear road signs that say, Hey, you know, chance go this way or Hey, Johnny go this way. You, I, I don't even know how it happens sometimes. I mean, um, I'm going to post some things on Twitter about the first company I started. That was what we would call an abysmal failure, com comically bad now when I look at it now. But that's how it should be. I should look at that and say, wow, that really sucked what I did, <laughs> what I did in 2014. I'll, I'll send you uh, a picture of this logo thing that I did that I looked I looked at a couple days ago and I just started laughing like that was <laughs> horribly fucking bad. <laughs> like, but, you know, but I wouldn't have gotten where I am now with Noble Body and this other company and having the eye that I do and the, um, I don't know, the acumen to be able to pull something off without just struggling through it. And, and it's struggle in a positive sense. It's not, and it hurts sometimes. I mean, you know, to, to pull this off, I have, I've had many sleepless nights. Like, how the hell am I going to make this work, um, you know, financially? And, and all the tenant and issues that come along with selling cosmetics basically all over the world right now. Um, there are just challenges that come up in front of you every, every hour. I had three right before we started this podcast. Um, but you, you get to a point where they just, they don't bounce off you. You absorb them and they don't hurt you anymore. And then you just kind of step over them or push them out of the way or deal with them. However you need to deal with them in a positive sense to get beyond whatever the issue or problem or challenge is. But you never find that until you're going through that, that crucible of fire that tempers you, that creates you into what you're supposed to be. If that's truly what you want to do and that's where you belong and I've had so many tests and I've had so many revelations about formulas and products and formulation and natural compounds now that it that it's just coming natural to me it, it's almost um, I posted something on Twitter yesterday about this like late last night it's almost turned into a bit of a a shamanistic kind of a feeling where I feel like sometimes I'm I'm basically a conduit I'm not inventing any of this. I'm discovering it for myself and I'm passing on what I'm learning to other people in the form of products in a bottle many times or an understanding of natural compounds that absolutely fascinates me. But the bottom line is to use that cliche is that you never get to that level of understanding unless you just keep pushing yourself through that process. I think I may, one more thing. Yeah. I think I may have say, said this when we did our last podcast. I, I believe that I was just sitting at my lab table and this thread in the universe just came by and I grabbed it. It came by for me. I grabbed it and then I just never let go of it. And it's a, it was a very strange, profound feeling when that happened to me, when I realized that this was where I belong because you know, with anything like this, you, you start off as a total dumbass. I mean, and, and I don't mean that in a negative sense, but you just don't, you're ignorant to virtually everything that you're trying to get to an understanding on. And, you know, as far as formulation and natural compounds and creating products that people will actually use and, and benefit from, benefit greatly, in my opinion, um, it is a long, long process. and what you also realize, what I've realized is that it never finishes. It's constantly morphing into some other level of understanding because there's 
just too much knowledge for one person to absorb it all. So you just keep absorbing as much as you can as you go along and keep passing it on. And in my case, it's, I know exactly where I belong. It's formulating products is my strength. Um, and that's, I'm working to get myself into that position where that's all I'm doing and everyone else is handling all of the other things around me. Um, and that's a challenge. It, we're talking about scaling and, you know, passing all kinds of important things on to other people that have to handle them properly. So it's, it's a challenge. So I'm a very visual thinker as many people who listen to this podcast already know. And when I'm sitting here listening to my guests and I've said this before too, but I, I often fall into these listening trances where I'm just, I'm in taking the information and I'm trying to connect it in a web and I end up in these sort of almost psychedelic visualizations often. And, and that was happening while you were talking in the background, you got on there pretty fucking like, <laughs> Definitely, I knew, I knew it. I just but, knew it. <laughs> but there was, you know, I was trying to think of how I might create a, a metaphor to describe what you're talking about because I can, like, I can feel the, like, the, the essence of what you're talking about and how you're dancing around trying to point out a bunch of different ways to get in there. And I was thinking about human beings in terms of just like an energetic vessel, right? You have you have your own person energy, but then there's also like these these like tendrils, these like funnel tendrils. And, you know, you kind of, some of them just like stab at you and you have to block them or allow them. And then some of them you have to reach out and grab. And the ones that you have to reach out and grab are the ones that are usually the most profound. But one way or the other, you kind of connect them in. Maybe like in the matrix, you got some shit that you stick these things into. And some of them are intake tubes and some of them are outtake tubes. You know, you get like, you got to take information in, you got to take resources in, but you also have to pour it out. And the more that you can plug in, and then efficiently put out, you know, the more opportunity and power and sort of influence that you have on the world around you. But what often happens is one of two things is that people have a bunch of intake tubes and they just get full and then it gets backed up and they can't accept anymore. And then they just like a sort of the gluttonous situation. And then there's sort of the people who only have a couple intake tubes and then they got a whole bunch of output tubes and they just get sucked dry and they shrivel up and it's sort of the scarcity situation. And, you know, if you can be an efficient manager of the things that are coming at you and then the things that you're putting back into the world and it's all sort of this cycling of energy, then you, it cycles faster and faster. But it's, it's up to you to determine, A, what inputs that you accept and block, and then B, how, what outputs you're putting out and whether they align with the things that you're taking in. Like if, you, if you're taking in good energy and, and good intention, then you're putting out snake oil that's not going to last forever and that kind of thing. So I guess maybe in terms of that sort of tripped out interpretation of what you're talking about, I wonder, I wonder maybe how you see or think about the idea of sort of that energy maintenance and that being a good shepherd, that cycling of inputs and outputs and how, um, how your experience has been with maybe increasing the speed or efficiency of those cycles and how that manifests outwardly. I, I don't, first of all, I don't think it's, um, it's trippy at all. I, as you can see, I, I'm really intrigued by, um, particle theory, wave theory, space, time, why are we here? Um, I, maybe as you get older, you, you focus more on things like that, just to try to get some, some level of understanding because there's so much that we don't know and we don't understand. Um, so the whole concept of, of different energy and your energy versus energy around you just from the universe or other people, everybody's experienced that feeling where you sit down next to somebody and you feel an instant kind of a connection where whether it's a girl whether it's a sexual thing or whether it's um, a friendship thing or just a um a connection with another person that you are really on the same freak wavelengths and frequencies everybody has experienced that and everybody's experienced the obverse of it where somebody walks in a room and you feel this cold 
negative, dark type of energy that you just want to get away from. Mm -hmm. And as you get more in tune with that sensation, you bring yourself closer to the energy that you vibe with, which changes over time. It could be different from one day to another. You gravitate toward the positive energies that you feel around you and you repel the negative energies. And I, I live my life that way now. Um, I've been in places and I've left because I felt something dark and it's not mystical or magical. It's maybe it's a sixth sense. Maybe it's my spider sense. Um, but it's like, okay, I'm, I'm out of here now. I've done that frequently in the last few years. Um, and then the same thing with, um, you mentioned the, the term snake oil. Like that's, that's a running joke with some of my friends. Um, <laughs> I, I'll bet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a deep, long, long-standing joke. And obviously, there's threads of that that go through history for thousands of years. Um, but to, to create products like this, it, I believe it has to come from a place of authenticity and goodness and and kindness and um, caring for what you're doing because of the intimacy of the process of these types of compounds and um, the intimacy of having products that people are going to be using on their face. There's nothing more intimate. Um, you, you could even say food products like, okay, that's, that's a very intimate process if you're creating a food product that people are going to be consuming. And that's one of the things that bugs me about, um, it bugs me a lot. And I'm glad a lot of people are railing on it about just horrible food products that are on the market because they are literally making people sick. And of course, a lot of people and companies don't care. I mean, that's, it's pretty dark, but that's the cold, hard reality of it. But I couldn't live with myself if I was, let's say I was going to create a food product. I would create a food product that was going to be beneficial and good for people for their health for their wellness mental physically spiritually everything so um i think those things are incredibly important and i think there's a lot more to what we do who we interact with how we interact than meets the eye and going back to your tube analogy i'm fortunate that i spend eras of before technology before the computer in your hand I, I completely span before that and after it so in one sense it's easier for me to put that down and just leave it alone and then on the other hand it's fascinating to me that you can run an international business with a handheld computer it's almost it still blows my mind it's futuristic mm -hmm. but people have so much information coming at them all the time that they're just inundated and everything has changed because of it the way people process information their access to information you you basically have access to just ungodly amounts of information from the beginning of recorded time if you really want to learn anything um it's just the whole thing is fascinating but you have to pick and choose what's important to you to your life to your goals to your objectives and ignore a lot of it because a lot of it is just noise um and, and i've i had to get to the point where i was very selective about what information i'm going to be taking in on any given day because you said there's only so many hours in a day and, and i've been in a stretch where i have a lot to get done in a short period of time um, so the whole process is just fascinating to me um all of it hmm. and um I'm at a point in my life now where I'm realizing that I needed to be challenged and I had gotten complacent. It was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made in my life. I got complacent. I got a little bit soft mentally and physically, and it almost took me down. And I've been rebuilding now for quite a few years, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, everything. And I'm far from done, but I have the energy and I have the wherewithal to, um, to, 
to pull it off at a high level. I mean, that's, that's where my head is at. And everybody should have that. No matter what it is, no matter how bad whatever you're going through is, you have to tell yourself every single day, I will make it through this. I will survive. I will prosper. And magical things happen when you already understand it in your head. Hmm. You know, it's funny that you ended it by saying magical things because I was thinking throughout your response there that you were talking in magical terms or mystical terms. And I was thinking about how there's this, there's this, there's this phenomenon and whether or not it exists in the, in the physical material realm is sort of moot. And, and maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. And you could make a good argument for something being there, but here's what I'm getting at is that like you talked about, you're making these products that people put on their body, on their face, and they look in the mirror and they put this on their face and there's, it's not just the oil. It's your intent that went into the oil. It's the research. It's the quality of the intent and the research. It's the intent of the person who's using the oil. It's the story that they bought into. It's them looking at their face and saying, I want to take care of my face. This isn't just vanity. You know, I want to be healthy. It's, it's kind of, if, if all those things are in alignment, it seems to be the case that the mind will take care of the rest. The placebo effect works. And the, you know, when things line up and you have a reason to believe in something, lo and behold, your body does it to itself. So, so I guess what I'm getting at here is, and this is one of the reasons that I talk about things like narrative or the difference between truth and falsehood, um, even on a metaphorical level, not just physics, but on the, on the ontological level, how we experience it, how a story can, is like, is like a compression algorithm, like a literal compression algorithm that when you unpack it, certain things happen. There are emergent features of the story. And what I'm getting at here is that there's, there does seem to be a certain magic attached to the stories and the words and the narratives and the things that we believe about what we're doing. And that's, you know, I talked to Beth Martins about this a little bit. She's an archetype coach who helps people sort of align with what they're designed by their natures to do. What role are you supposed to fill and how can you do that the best? And there's this thing that happens, you know, with the words we buy into and the stories that we align ourselves with and the narratives that we allow into us and then decide what to do with it really does have a very meaningful and real measurable impact on the way that we, on our health, on the way that we interface with the world, our attitudes, our relationships, our, our financial relationships, all these kinds of things are determined so powerfully by the stories that we interface with and what we think about them. And like you said, you approach this with the, the power of, the experience of failure and with the genuine desire you know, I'm getting older in my years and I want to see a positive effect in this world. And I look around me and I see my peers who aren't doing that and they're falling apart and I don't want to live like that. I want to live as long as I can and enjoy it. I want to see the comet come back. Not only that, but I'm working with these things that are promoting health, not just of the planet and, and all the way up through the process, the people who are working on it, the people who experience it and the story is all the way along. They're all in alignment. And I guess I'm just wondering from your perspective, how much of that, you know, how much of that is a conscious thing that you invite into your life or that you focus on in your life? And how much of that is just sort of, sort of a, like a, a metaphorical Darwinism that's, that's honed you to act as though you were consciously thinking about those things. Yeah, that's, uh, that's well said. I mean, um, that it's that whole this whole topic that we're on right now and I don't even know how we got on it it was meant to be apparently I mean basically what we're talking about is a a manifestation of your reality into the reality of those around you and uh, I, I've seen so you know when you see examples of of manifestation whether it's called a miracle in one place or something unusual or um, just something that's not explainable people that come back from the brink with something happens and they come back from the brink um, 
the whole concept of manifestation to me is extremely powerful. And I, I live my life every single day now with that in mind, not just as far as a company perspective and running a company or running companies that sell specific products, but in my life too, about how I try to conduct myself and do conduct myself and what's in my head on any given day. Is it, is it positive? Is it negative? Is it neutral? And I, I try to stay very in tune with what, is rolling through in that kind of thought ticker tape that goes through everybody's head every single day and to keep it um, not only positive, but to direct it, whether it's I'm, you know, troubled with a financial issue or I'm, I'm wrestling with a formulation issue, which happens all the time now because I'm working on a bunch of different things, but the power of the, the power of the manifestation and the power of your mind to create your reality and to create things that come out of your reality because of some thought that goes through your, through your head. Um, I, I'm eternally fascinated by something doesn't exist. It doesn't even exist. And then you have a thought, you have a flash in your mind. And then that is the seed that begins empires, companies, love relationships, whatever it is. It, that, that entire concept of that, that inception or that inflection point of an idea and how the idea is transmogrified or transmuted or created into something tangible. Somebody had to do this the first time, make a glass. Like, how did that even happen? You know, it, it took a lot of thought, a lot of effort and a lot of heat and a lot of understanding for that to happen or anything around us. I mean, the, the whole thing is just really fascinating when you, when you try to wrap your head around it. So when I was going through this with whether it's a company or whether a product, um, when I started Noble Body, I wasn't in a good place mentally. Um, and I had just scrapped a company I was telling you about earlier because I, I thought it sucked. I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be as good as it had to be for what I wanted to do. And that was a tough decision to create something, realize that it sucked. When you have people around you saying, oh, yeah, that's cool. I like that or that looks okay or whatever. And then you know in your heart that it, it's not. And so I scrapped a company and I started another company. And that... um seed of noble body when that whole thing started that was that was the spring i came up with the name for noble body in march of 2016 so that's three years ago and then to stay on it for that long the follow-through is everything everybody has great ideas at some point wow how about this when i was younger i had so many great ideas because i was so energetic and you know reasonably high IQ. I don't even know what it is. I know it's pretty high, but I'd have all these great ideas, but I never did anything with most of them. So what good, what good is an idea without the follow through? Hmm. But that whole, that whole process as condensed by you in your question is we could talk about it for weeks. I mean, the, the whole, the whole thing is just amazing. Hmm. So this conversation is, it's very, it's very salient to a lot of the things I've been thinking about and that have been me coming too. towards me lately. And I guess that's why we're sort of on the level as you talked about. Um, and here's the thing I have been thinking about and trying to put into words people will understand. And I keep, I keep retrying and I keep learning more about what, what it is that I'm talking about every time I keep trying to tell people this mm -hmm. or like you shared this but it's just you know existence exists you, you you have to start with that here we are it's it's it seems foolish and counterproductive not to because even if we don't exist we exist we seem to exist we think we exist we have manifested our existence into existence i suppose but because existence exists 
and there are rules that it plays by you, so many times people try to impose their own desires or their own sort of limited understanding onto the infinite complexity and you know they eternally fall short but the thing i'm i'm trying to suggest to people is that you know like it's it's a feature it's not a bug it's a function it's not an error existence exists the way it exists because it has to it has to be this way otherwise this existence that we're in can't exist it can't there's no there's no fudge there's no fudge room there's no margin of error there's infinite possibilities and these are the ones that work to allow us to live in this existence this, and so when you approach stuff you have to take that attitude or that sort of reality of reality and in, into consideration and so when you you know when you talk about things like let's say there is um like the there are things that seem counterintuitive like like the placebo effect you go okay the placebo effect exists but because somebody took a pill that was sugar water and somebody took an amphetamine uh, and they both experienced symptoms similar to amphetamines but only a certain amount of people experienced it with the placebo like maybe 30 percent did and then over here it's 50 percent or 80 percent but still not 100 percent even so, 20% of those people didn't feel like they took anything. Okay, well, just because somebody took a sugar pill over here and then got high as a motherfucker on amphetamines, <laughs> and then somebody over here took the amphetamines and had the same exact response. Well, that's not an accident. It's not like a bug in the system. It's a tool for you to cue into and go, well, why? Why did that happen? Well, it turns out that when we dive a little deeper into this thing, that what you believe about a thing has an impact. And also, sometimes the environment around you um, and the clinical area and what you're told about something, like it all, it all shapes your experience of the thing. And then it comes down to the actual belief about the experience shapes much of what happens to you. Okay. Well, that's not an accident. And it doesn't mean that, like, you shouldn't use the tools that, like, if you, like, you're not probably going to think a nail into a board. You need to use the hammer to nail the nail into the board, but you first have to think that you can use the hammer. You first have to, uh, you know, like make, send the impulse to the arm to make the hammer swing. And sometimes it's obvious like that. Like you, you can't nail a nail with your mind, but you can nail a nail with your mind. If you just do it right. If you just think it right, it happens in the physical world. Just like it's a, it's a literal impulse that goes down your body into your, and it happens. And the placebo effect is the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just a different mechanism. It's not your elbow. It's not your nervous system. It's sort of like your manifestation system or your spiritual system. And, and you don't have to think about it in terms of that, but what you think has a physical impact on the world and you can prove it because you think something and do it and then it happens. It's like, okay, well, it doesn't just happen because of your elbow. And the more that you can get in alignment with, this is not a bug. It's not an accident. It's a thing. It's a tool. And if you know how to use the tool, then you get the output that the tool was intended for. And I guess I'm wondering, because you talked about some of that and you've talked about some of that all the way through and I've been sort of honing in on that, but I'm, I'm wondering, I guess, I guess to bring it back home, cause we're kind of getting out there and I want, I want to make it concrete for people. And it sounds like you're kind of with me on that idea that there's, there is more to it, but okay. So what I guess I'm curious to hear is how does understanding that and getting in alignment with, sort of that ben benevolent manifestation. And then you create this company and you feel like that's in alignment with what you're doing. You know, or that's in alignment with that pr principle of benevolent manifestation. And that's why good things are happening for you all around you. Why, like, what is it about what you're doing that does that for you? What is it about your products in particular that express that out into the world? And, and what about this newest product? Like, why is this the culmination of, of all the lead up and already feeling like you're on the right track. And then you make this thing and it's ready and it took two years to make and you didn't rush it. You just did everything you had to. And, and how is what you're doing now sort of spreading that energy back out into the world in the proper way, I guess, because it sounds like you really intrinsically feel like that's the case. Yeah, that, there's a lot. There's a lot in there, man. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I want to hit on, but yeah, before I get into the, the, the product stuff, I want to, I want to hit on one thing that you, that you talked about. Um, 
it, I've always been intrigued for a long time. I've been intrigued by, do we control our path, our reality, where we end up? And of course, a lot of that's true based on your rudimentary decisions every single day. You know, am I going to do crack today? <laughs> or, am I, or am I gonna meditate and eat a healthy meal and go to the gym? I mean, you know, that's that's as rudimentary as it gets, but but let's say you're on the right track and you're not, you know, using you're not high on PCP every day and you're you're living a clean, wholesome life with um goals and objectives, whether they be, you know, kids, family, profession, you know, love interests, things like that. Um is it all is it all in your control is some of it in in your control or is none of it in your control it's the self-determination versus the fate or fatalistic i know you know i've spoken with a lot of people on a very deep level about um everything is predetermined for you it's your destiny whatever that may be and i i can depending on any given day i can make an argument either either way that no matter what you do, you're still fulfilling your destiny. That's one way. Or your destiny could be there, there, there. And the decisions that you're making and the thoughts that you're manifest, ma manifesting as you move forward are going to determine your ultimate fate or reality. Um, and who knows what the answer to that is, but... I'd rather err on the side of caution and try to make all the best decisions that I can to end up where I want to be and where I need to be and um, where I see myself six months, one year, five years, 10 years from now. Um, there's a lot of time left. I think that's a big mistake that older people make is, you know, they, there's some arbitrary deadline on your horizon and everybody does this. I'm super guilty of this when I was younger. I don't do it as much now of boy, when I'm this, then I'm going to be this. When I'm retired, I'm going to be happy, which is fucking bullshit. When you think about it, um, you know what people that retire do, they die. <laughs> it, I'm seeing it all around me. I mean, I'm, I'm at that age. It's like, yeah, man, I'm retired now and you sit around and you get fat and you have no, you have no goals. You have no purpose except, well, what should I do today to be happy? Cause I'm happy and retired. Well, what you're going to do is fucking die. That's pretty much what the pattern is. The people that are healthiest and productive longer that have some purpose or objective are the ones that are truly happy. And that's why when I embarked on this at the beginning, what seemed like a crazy mission, which is now making perfect sense, is the purpose is what drives me. The purpose and the process are what drive me on any given day to work on this legacy project that I'm working on. And that's what it is. It's, it's not just for me. It's for, it's for my sons. It's for potential partners in the future. It's for everyone. I wanted to create something great and I'm not stopping. Um, and that's been my mentality now for a while. When I understood where I was and why I was here, it, it all started to make perfect sense. And, you know, despite the challenges and problems that are going to be thrown in your face all the time, then it just feels natural that you are just going to work through them. And believe me, there's a lot of them. There really are. Um, so to segue back into your question about products, um, when I started, I did it wrong. I did it all wrong. I did it completely wrong. With, with the other company that I mentioned, and people can Google it, you'll still pick, you'll find images of my products are still on the internet um it was called scrub junkies i actually trademarked it too so there's a trademark out there um that's dead now uh for a company called uh, scrub junkies so i did it all wrong i made products and then hey everybody look what i did it's wonderful you're gonna love it and that's not how it works <laughs> i mean it gave me what it did was it gave me a good understanding about how to make a great sugar scrub or a salt scrub. I don't have any salt scrubs on the market now because they're extremely challenging to do it right. Um, 
but that was the core of being able to create things that people really want to use and the whys behind it. Is it healthy? Is it pleasant? Does it smell good? All that stuff, all those basic factors of a product like that. But I learned those lessons uh, the hard, hard way about, you know, what do people want and why? And now my, I, that process that I started with is completely the opposite now. Now it's I analyze in detail what people want first, what I think they want, and then I get an understanding of that, and then I go after that. And everything is crafted with that in mind. Like the body oil that I just launched um, Friday, last Friday, I worked on that for two solid years. And I probably went through at least five, maybe as many as eight concepts about how to brand it and market it and who to direct it at. And uh, as I kept going through that process and making mistakes and getting frustrated, I realized exactly what it should be. It should be targeted at things that I'm passionate about, health and fitness. It's a huge area. Um, and then when I realized that, this is months ago now, I realized the concept in my head, I didn't have names. I actually crowdsourced a bunch of that on, on Twitter. People were really helpful. People will tell you the truth if you're listening and you're open to it. You got to take your ego and basically throw it in the trash. My mind's been in the trash for so long that it doesn't even cross my mind anymore. When people tell me something about a product, I listen because they are giving you the most valuable information essentially for free that you can ever get in product development. Um, and there's a huge tangent here with big companies and how products end up on the market and shit like that, that I could talk about forever. Cause a lot of it's very frustrating to me, but that process is absolutely amazing to me. And the information that I got just kept reaffirming that I was what I thought was doing the right thing as far as branding and formulation. And then when I realized that, when I realized that I was creating something in my image based on my lifestyle of health and fitness and clean diet and healthy living and good living, uh, treating everybody with kindness, everything, it all make, made perfect sense for me. And then the formula started to mirror those concepts, if that makes sense. And that's when I first started to have the kind of conduit shamanistic kind of feelings about what I was doing and, and why, and why am I directing this particular product at this particular group of people at this time? And it all mirrors what I was creating um, myself in myself and evolving as a person from where I was to where I am to where I'm going. And um, that that's when you realize that you're, you're exactly where you're supposed to be to completely close our loop of what we're discussing. Because when I started to have those understandings within myself about, you know, natural compounds and products and marketing and dealing with people and wanting to improve their lives with a, with a product, and that and that's it. I mean, and that's a hard point to get to. But when I started to have those realizations about my evolution as a person, how this is evolving as a company, everything just kind of made perfect sense to me. And that's where I am right now. And it's it's obviously challenging. It's extraordinarily challenging. But it's nothing that feels wrong. It, it all feels right and correct and like I'm in some alignment of where I'm supposed to be now is that destiny or is that self-determination of my path your your guess is as good as mine so you talked about earlier the cup you said you know there had to be a first person 
who made a cup. They made a glass. And you, you know, like yours right there, it has lines, you know, um, and it has a has a rounded bottom. I'm drinking out of a measuring cup right now. It has a handle. <laughs> It has certain functions that it's intended for. It makes me look like a redneck when I drink out of it. <laughs> but you understand it's a cup, and I understand yours is a cup. And you could look at almost any cup that's ever been made, and you go, that's a fucking cup. <laughs> and it, and it, it leads me to this concept. You know, in the Bible, it talks about how God took the clay and formed Adam, which actually means the roots are from clay or of the clay. So he, he took the elements of existence, the clay, and he formed Adam. And then he breathed his spirit into him. And that animated the clay. And so you have, you have these, you know, the mind, body, spirit triangle has sort of been present, whether it's a wheel or it's a spinning or it's a triangle or whatever. But that idea that there's, there's the mind and there's the body and there's the spirit. And, and there's an important thing to think about. You know, we've talked a lot about how the thoughts... They're very quicksilver. Like you could imagine a cup. Let's be the first person to ever think of a cup. And you see it in your mind. It just like quicksilver forms a cup. And then the next thing, and it just totally collapses. And the next thing comes up. And you can see it perfectly in your mind, but then it's gone. And then you have your body. And your body is made from the clay. It's made from the elements of existence, right? And you can gather certain of those elements together and make your own clay. And you can form it into a cup. And then you have the spirit, which is like the essence of that cup. A cup is a cup doesn't matter what, like if you made it out of literal clay or if you made it out of um, sand that you melted into glass or you made it out of wood that you carved out, it's a cup because the, the concept of a cup and when you give it a name, you know, that's, that's another thing from the Bible. Adam's first task was to go around naming everything because when it's a tree, then what is a tree? Well, it's a thing that has roots and it has a thing. And okay, well, that's a tree. And then, well, what is that? It's a cup. Well, what is a cup? It's a thing that holds stuff inside of it. And it's about this big. Okay. And so you start to understand through naming things and then asking what it is that you've just named the elements of existence. And you've talked about how, okay, once I got in alignment with my own spirit, which is like the nature of Johnny Noble, these are the things that I do. And these are the things that I feel most connected and most fulfilled when I'm doing. How can I spread more of that out into the world? And so you ask the world, how can I spread more of what I'm doing into you? And they said, well, I like this and this and this, but I don't like this and this and this. And you said, oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to do exactly this and this and this, like you said. And then here's my essence distilled into the version that you asked for me. Here is me. Here's the parts of me that you asked for, and I'm happy to give it to you. And because you know that I connected with you and I listened to what you had to say, you're happy to give me something back. And that what you're giving me is the power to continue this process and to make it even bigger so that I, Johnny Noble, can now offer all that I have to offer to all the people who are interested in having it because I've listened to all of them. And, I, and now I'm just a formulator. When the guy who comes up with the patterns, and then I help other people see how to follow them. And then I manifest who I am into the world in a way that people actually want to take part in it. And that's a, that's a superpower once you realize that that exists. And sometimes it's just about getting yourself right with who you are first. How do you expect other people to align with who you are and what you represent if you don't? But once you do that, you have that baseline of I'm good. I'm good with who I am. It can't ever stay that way unless you start doing what you're doing, which is I'm good with who I am. And I did all these things and I know all this stuff that allowed me to do that. And here you go. And here's the ways that you can have it. And I guess I'm wondering, you know, it took you a lifetime to realize that you just started a company just a few years ago, not very long ago. And you still hadn't realized that it took the failure of that company to make you realize that. And most people are going to say, well, you know, I don't want to wait until I'm 60 to, to like f figure it out, man. But here you are and you're like, I'm good. I feel so connected right now that everything that came to me was so worth it because now I'm living in my element and I love it. And everything has become worth it for you. But I'm sure along that way, you experienced a bunch of bullshit that made you not so excited about being alive and you, and it drove you to find that thing. I like, guess I'm just wondering how to make sense of all this. You mean like yesterday? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, this process is far from over. It's um, you know, not to get into the uh, gory details, but you know, pulling something off like this financially alone, you know, that's that's a that's a challenge. I'll I'll be working on that for a while, but that could change in a second. So my focus isn't on the problems. My focus is on the process and working through the process so that whatever that problem is, is going to be automatically resolved just through the process that I'm in of creating and selling products. That's what it comes down to. But it goes much deeper than creating and selling. And that's what I'm understanding. And I, I think maybe at some point I had an idea of, I'm going to create something and sell it and make a bunch of money. Who doesn't have that? kind of basic basal rudimentary you know everybody wants well not everybody but most people want to be successful and, and comfortable which is a trap but um but that's the wrong way to look at it and i've learned that myself i i think that's i think that's a mistake and going back to when i was an attorney okay I'm a hired gun. I go fight, fight over other people's money in a courtroom over a hospital project or whatever, or whatever the project du jour is. And I get a paycheck and I build a big house and I'm happy as fuck and all that, whatever. Um, as I've evolved from that to actually this desire to create something great, I have come full circle in my existence about why am I here and what really does matter? And to go back to something that you said is you have to be right with yourself before you're going to be right with anything at any level, at any higher level, especially. Um, a lot of people are just existing and they have way, way, way more power and potential than they can even imagine if they just apply it but you have to be right with yourself on those mental and spiritual levels and physical, they're all tied together before you can project that out into something else, into other people, into some mission, into some project, but it all starts from within. And the, um, I've been absolutely mesmerized by the whole process of creation, especially since I've gotten to this point where, um, I'm, I'm actually creating products that that people want that they tell me hey your, your product I've had people tell me your products have changed my life because I never knew one guy said recently I never knew it could be this good and that's a powerful it, not only endorsement um, I have so many endorsements now I don't know what to do with them I just, <laughs> I, I have a humble brag <laughs> well, well, <laughs> but you know, it's it's amazing to me because when I'm going through the process, it's like, okay, I, I created a face. Let's pick one product. I created a face oil. I had no idea if people would like it. And and there's this agonizing long ass time period where you're sitting there, okay, yeah, hey, store's open, man. <laughs> where is everybody? And then little things started to happen. It it's but, you know, and not just friends. I mean, you, your friends sometimes will tell you what you want to hear. But if you're really paying attention, they're going to give you a lot of information. And a lot of it is, well, are they using it? And do they come back for more? However they do. Hey, give me some more of that stuff. Or, hey, can I buy some more of that stuff? But that whole process is, it's horrible. <laughs> well, it you know what it is? It's... What, what eats you alive during that process, me anyway, was the uncertainty of it. Because I put so much time and effort into understanding something and creating something. Time, effort, money, everything. My Part of my soul. Part of my soul is in those bottles because of the everything that I had to do to get it to where I thought it was good, which, and I have a, a very, very high bar for what I think is quality for products like this. But there are so many unknowns and so much uncertainty that if you, if you give in to the uncertainty during that process, 
you're going to give up. You can't, it's like a dragon and it's always there and it's on a big giant chain like in uh, Game of Thrones and you just have to ignore it. It's going to keep talking to you. It's going to keep tormenting you. It's going to keep trying to get you to turn back, quit, whatever you want to call it. You have to ignore it and you have to overpower it in your mind and then it, it ceases to have its power over you. But that's a long process. But the entire idea of what we call creating something has so many different levels to it. Um, when people give me a compliment about a product now, I am the level of gratitude. I, I can't even describe it. I can't even describe the level of gratitude when people say, wow, this is pretty great because of that entire process of of pain and fire that I go through to get it to where it is, where people want to give you their money for it. It's really that it really boils down to that simple concept to keep a company going, but there's so much more behind it to get those products in their hands in the first place to even get their feedback. That interchange between you and someone else is um, that's where the reward starts to come like launching that product and getting the reception that I've gotten and already getting feedback from people is a pretty amazing feeling that once again reaffirms, Hey, you're on the right track. As difficult as it is right now, where you are right now, you are still on the right track and you just don't stop and you keep going. Hmm. That's the best way I could describe that whole process. What you just described is something that I can connect with a lot and, and on, a, on a lesser scale right now, but even so. For example, I have a book that I wrote called Uncommon Mentality, and I've almost sold 100 copies. I'm two copies away from selling 100 copies. And I mean, nice. that's, that's, that's not like a giant thing, but it's giant to me, and here's why. That book is something that I had to live my whole life to write. And I had to go through a lot of heartache and pain and suffering and bad decisions in order to write that book. And I had to admit to all those things and deal with them and get over them and learn how to. And then to present to the world, here's all the ways in which I fucked up. And here's how I overcame them. And here's what I learned along the way that I want to teach to you so that you can avoid ever going down that path. And so like you talked about. I had to put so much of myself into that book that when I put it out into the world, there's, there's a certain part of me that can do that easily because I, I don't connect with a lot of emotions in the same way that other people do. So it's like, okay, well, you know, I made this. I'm definitely going to put this out here. But that can be a scary process. And it was scary for me, but just in a different way. It's like, well, you know, like I sacrifice a lot to make this book happen. And I would like this book to have its intended effect. And as I started getting people having read it and then coming back and saying, Chance, you know, I read your book and I really liked it. In particular, this thing about it. And I'm doing it right now. Like I, I'm doing this thing that you suggested. It's the only thing I took out of the book was this thing. I liked it and blah, blah, blah. Okay, but this one thing. It's like, okay, cool. And then, you know, the second wave and the third wave. And, you know, Chance, I read this book just because I like you and you're my friend or whatever, but now I'm reading it again because I realized by the time I got to the end of it, there's a lot of stuff in here I'm actually interested in doing. And I've had a lot of these messages and people reaching out and saying, Hey man, I like, I'm doing this right now, but I can already tell this is going to be great for my life. And thank you for giving this to me. And it feels good, man. You know, and it's the same as like you were talking about, but the thing I want to point out to people is that, you know, it wasn't easy to put that book out. It wasn't easy to just present to the world. Like, Hey man, I used to be a drug addict and I used to be a porn addict and I used to hurt people and I used to hurt myself. And I thought about dying all the time and, and you know, like, this is who I am here. Here I am now. And I overcame it. But most of the time when you people hear about people going through these things, you automatically write them off. But I'm fucking telling you, you're not, you're not revealing it to me. I'm revealing it to you. And then I'm revealing how I'm not that way now. And I, I'm out here showing you that I'm not that way. And now if you believe in me, then you can go believe in this stuff. And, and then I'm giving you the same tools that I used. And when you do that, there's a lot writing on that, your reputation, your whole, your whole thing. And it's the same as you, because what you're saying is, hey, I know what I'm talking about. 
I'm the guy you should trust to do this. And there's a whole just slew of all kinds of shit you could put on your skin. But noble body, noble body is the one that you should stick with because I care about you and I know what I'm talking about. And I've spent the time and the research and the money to put into this to make it exactly what you needed. And I know that it's what you needed because I asked you and you told me and I listened. And when you put it out there, it's, it's like, yeah, you know, like I, I'm, this is quite a claim I'm making. And this is my reputation and this is my passion and this is my, my expression of the good I want to see in the world. And if it flops, that's brutal. And there's always that possibility. Maybe you misheard. Maybe you made a misstep somewhere that you couldn't even see for whatever reason. And then it's like, oh man, I put everything I had into this and it wasn't enough. And we all probably, those of us who really go for it, it's like you talked about that other company. I'm sure you really wanted that to work out for whatever your motivations were at the time. And it didn't. It's just like, damn it, man, I, I made this baby and now I got to sacrifice it. And I guess I'm wondering when you put like, number one, I wonder what you would tell people to help them get over that hump of just show yourself to the world, expose your heart and your soul and let them know who you really are. And you don't have anything to hide, but it's hard to do that. And, you know, I had to, bash my head against the the concrete wall for 15 years to be ready to do that. And and you've had to do whatever you've had to do. But I guess, so the, the point is how can people, what would you suggest to people to get over that like feeling? And then number two is when you, I maybe want you to go into a little bit more of the reward of the end of that process. So you sort of have like, here's how you get started and here's really what you start to get to see. So people can start to recognize when they jump in that like these are the like these are the feelings or the sensations or the thoughts that have guided me along and now I get to have these things that I love. Well, the the process um the process can be agonizing depending on what you you know what what is your or a particular person's objective. And there is a certain seasoning that comes with with age and experience. Um, I had a lot of uh, experiences when I was younger where, um, you know, a lot of life experiences, um, you know, kind of shitty younger parts of my life issues. It, everybody has those, everybody has a story. It's just a, a matter of degree of severity. And a as you open up with people and you get, you hear their stories, you realize, well, maybe my story isn't as bad as I, I thought it was. Um, I had something pretty shitty happen to me in my childhood and I struggled with it through my teen years. And then as I got a little bit older, I started law school when I was 25. I was a little bit later cause I took three years off after college. I started to view my challenges when I was younger as a blessing because it made me stronger. It made me smarter. Um, sometimes they push you down the wrong path, but overall I started to view those events of my life as, as um, a, a tempering process, something that made me better, made me stronger, made me have a better understanding of human nature, maybe why I was here, what my purpose was. And it's an individual process that everyone has to go through. It, it is, it's a cliche, but it is a tempering like steel. The best swords come from the steel that was stressed the most is a very basic premise. And, you know, guys that have been in combat will tell you, or, you know, seasoned survivalists or upper echelon athletes, um, I, I talked to my oldest son a lot about this because he's a really good baseball player. And we've talked a lot about the, the mental states necessary to condition yourself to be a higher level athlete. There's a lot that goes into it. He's, he's still a kid. He's 16 years old, but at the same time, he's quite mature for his age, but it's, it's most definitely a, an individualized tempering process. Because, you know, you'll look up at the TV tonight and you'll see a baseball player that might not even be 21 years old yet that's having remarkable success in a very, very difficult professional environment. How did he accelerate to get there so quickly 
when people like me maybe takes longer. I've had success in my life, but I won't stop until I have the success that I see in front of me for a company like Noble Body. So it's all individual and it, it the timeline is not static. It's not linear. You know, you're going to have an up point here. You're going to have a down point here. It, it definitely goes in waves and cycles and you can look at anyone's life and they have, you see some remarkable success here, but you don't see all the hills and valleys or the troughs and the wave and the peaks and the wave that they went through to get to that point over here. And it, it's always a mistake to look at one thing and say, man, look at that. He or she got lucky. Well, no, that's not. We all know now, especially what you're trying to do at a high level and having what I perceive as a lot of success with what you're doing and how you're doing it. And I'm, um, I'm really happy for how you've progressed, even in the short period of time since I've met you. You know, it's a it's a cool thing to watch people work so hard at something that they're obviously very engaged in and passionate about. And it's it's most definitely an individualized process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, you know, and the beauty is in the struggle. It, it, that's another cliche, but it's it's true is you you know exactly what you're made of as you're going through that if you just keep going and powering through it and like today for instance i i know for a fact i'm going to be working until eight or nine o'clock tonight it's just and it's fine um i'm completely okay with it it's it's one i call i have about three days a week like this maybe four sometimes especially this summer with that other project i call them monk mode days where i shut it down I'll put on some sort of, you know, sound, some music, whatever. It could be binaural beats. I mean, it could be anything. Um, and I will just focus, focus, focus until I lose focus and then I'll stop and I'll pick it up again tomorrow. But it's, it's just part of the process. And um, uh, my, my hat is off to anyone that's trying to create and accomplish anything whether it's on a smaller level or a grand scale, because that that's where the beauty is in being human is. Um, and that's why we're here is what are you going to do with what you've been given? And um, unfortunately, a lot of people don't do much with what they've been, been given. It's, mm. it's all shallow and visceral and, and, you know, pleasure based. Um, and it's, it's a curse. It's the curse of, um, we have so much and we've been fortunate enough to live in this modern society where things have been a little bit easier now. We, it's not like we have to hunt and gather to survive or survive some sort of difficult challenges every single day just to exist. Um, but people have lost sight of all of the power that you've been given with this amazing brain and this amazing body. And you got to do something with it. You can't just you know, mindlessly play porn, alcohol, drugs, whatever. There's so many traps people fall into that everyone can fall into them. But the, the beauty is in that process of, of creation and using what we have to, um, to find something that's maybe your, once again, maybe your destiny or where you're supposed to be. And it's a, it's a it's an entertaining process, but it's also a very difficult process. Mm. I could see it in your face when you were describing it to me. You have seen some shit that has molded you into the man that you are right now and that you're going to become because of that. So it, it's a whatever it is, it's a blessing. And it doesn't seem like that when you're going through it, but it most definitely is when you really boil it down to its essence. You know, there's, there's so much still inside of what you just said, but um, there's some, there's some time that we need to be respectful of here. And, and to be perfectly honest, there's so much we, <laughs> we covered and, and 
on a, on a level that people usually don't get into in their day-to-day -day lives here in this episode that there's, there's, you know, you could listen to this episode a few times and you probably still wouldn't pick up everything that was put down and probably neither one of us did either. But first of all, I just want to say, I'll have to have you back on a third time and you can just tell me more nice stuff about me because that's always, uh, that's always <laughs> pleasurable. Uh, but number oh, yeah. two, <laughs> Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> oh, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm definitely going to let it go right <laughs> to my head. <laughs> Number two, though, is that, um, you know, you the last thing you just said and the, the, the thing you're kind of hitting on the whole time about your struggles being your blessings. And I think that that's true as long as you choose for that to be true. That, I mean, your your struggles can be problems or they can be solutions you know you're presented with whatever you're presented with it kind of goes back to what i'm talking about your life isn't a bug your life isn't an accident it's it is what it is and so you have to say to yourself all right well if it is what it is then how can i make this work for me because i already lived it it's not like i can go back to yesterday and relive it i can't i'm just right here right now and i don't know what the future holds because there's too many variables to factor i can pick like maybe one thing and focus on that and have a pretty good job of predicting what's going to happen as long as I don't get sideswiped by the rest of my life, which I might, you know, it's, it's kind of like, okay, but I'm right here, right now, what am I doing? Well, I'm, I'm doing what I believe in. And are you? Cause, cause if you are, then everything that led up to you doing what you're supposed to be doing right now is fine because it had to happen. Cause here you are doing the thing that you believe in. But if you're not, it's very easy to see why you might begin to see life as meaningless or that things are out of your control or that there really isn't a point to things or that, uh, you know, like you hate your fucking job or your boss is an asshole or like, it's not your fault. It's somebody else's fault or whatever, because to turn around and look at your life and say, I, I built this. It's great when your life is how you believe that it should be, but it's painful to turn around and say, I built this and it sucks. It sucks. My life fucking sucks. And I made it that way because of everything that I believed and did about what I believed. But if you can turn it around and it doesn't matter when you turn it around, I mean, I'm in my 30s. It's not that old, but it's old to internet people. It's like, look, I never even came on social media till I was 32, okay? And the reason for that is because my life sucked. I built a shitty life. And then even the elements that came into my life that gave me faith that I could build a good one, you know, I had to earn those every day because I had a lot of momentum of being a shitty dude. And I had to turn that around and I had to own all of it. You can't just like, you can't. You can't build a solid foundation without filling in the pits first. You know what I mean? It's like you, you can't. It just crumbles later because you never took care of the problem. But if you do, then you can build. And I guess what I want to get at before there's – I just want to ask you one more thing is just I want to make sure people hit that point and get it into their head. It's like if you choose to make your problem solutions and you act as though they are, then that's how your life becomes. And then things start becoming possible for you. But the opposite is true. If it's a problem, if it's – if it's like unchangeable, if it's just your destiny, if it just is what it is, then your life will be that way too. And it's, and it's either way and you can't foresee everything, but you can foresee what you're going to do right now, which is solve a problem, not make a problem. But look, okay. There's a thing I've been doing and I want to have time to do it before, before you take off. So I want to ask you, what is one question that you think people should ask of other people? And what's one question that you think other people should ask of themselves? I, I'll start with the self one, because uh, I, I think that's where it all begins. Um, the, the question that, and I'll personalize it, it's what are you capable of? That's the question I ask myself. And... It, it's, I think it's one of the deepest things that you can inquire of yourself because you're, you're laying everything bare. You're laying bare your, your intellect, your capabilities, your potential, um, everything, it, your entire essence. And, and it's a hard question to ask because, you know, if I ask, if I look in the mirror and I say, Johnny, what are you capable of? And I'm not going to be in the NBA. I mean, so you have to have a realistic assessment of, 
<laughs> you know, what, what is your present capability based on where you're at? Are you 15 and you're struggling with something or are you 56 and working toward a very, very defined, well-defined goal at this point? And I do it every day. I wake up every single day and I say to myself, how can I make myself better today? And how is that in line with what my overall objective is as you know, I have two sons, as a dad, as a businessman? How do I get better today? And how does that align with what my objectives are as a man to be a better person for myself, for my family, for society, for my friends, for everyone? And, and as a company owner that wants to do it ethically in the right way, and actually produce something positive and great for the world rather than just some more fungible shit that's out there that's uh, ubiquitous at this point. So that's the question I ask myself. Um, asking other people, it's the same, it's the same question. It's what, what is your potential as a person to get you to where it is that you want to be? Because I don't care wherever somebody is, whether it's on the top of the world, there's always, there's always the, um, the false summit. And I had a really great experience with my sons last, uh, early last summer, we went to Alaska. I have a friend that lives in Alaska and we took a trip up to catch a can and we went on this kind of epic hike in the middle of this giant Island. And, um, I knew it was going to be a false summit and both of them said, yeah, shit, we're almost at the top because we're, we're getting tired. And I knew, I didn't say anything. And then we got to the top of that peak and then there was one more big peak that was another, uh, it had to be another close to a mile away. And I, we, we sat down for a while and had a snack and a drink and I said, you guys have experience with what's called a false summit. Maybe you've heard that term before but now you've actually lived through it and you had that experience of you think you're at the top, but then there's another level and there's many different metaphors and allegories for that sensation. When you go through it, maybe it's horrific and it costs or could cost you your life, or maybe it's an inconvenience where now you get to get to the next plateau. And I think most, the question I would ask most people is, what is the pinnacle of what you're capable of as a person? You know, maybe some people have a disability. There is still a, an absolute pinnacle that anyone can achieve in their own lives if they just keep following that path of trying to determine what your future is versus accepting some random arbitrary fate or destiny because that's what you've limited yourself to in your mind everybody's capable of something great but you have to take the step and go through that process and um that's a powerful question that lots of people in our group i think ask those questions every single day and that's why we're interacting with each other because we have you know pretty amazing goals and aspirations as people and for ourselves and families and for society. But everybody should be asking themselves that question is what am I capable of? What am I capable of accomplishing in the blink of an eye, less than blink of an eye time that I have left on this planet? However we got here, whatever we are, that's the question that everybody should ask. And it ties right in with, is it congruent with, let's say there is an afterlife. Let's presume there is a soul. This vessel that we're living in, this, this flesh, this vessel, is a very sophisticated recording device on many sense levels. Some that we can't even really touch on a daily basis. We have the five basic senses, but it, it would seem that there are other senses outside of those that we can't quite perceive unless we take something or do something, whether it's 
DMT or meditation or psilocybin or whatever. I mean, it's very well documented that these things open up some cut sort of gateway. So what is it that you want to leave as a legacy in that spiritual essence that is inhabiting this parcel of flesh, which is a recording device? It's also a device that has self-determination that makes decisions about, do I want to be an evil asshole like <laughs> Stalin? Or do I want to be, do I want to be somebody that's good and great and tap into that part of the universe? There's plenty of both in this world. I, I fall on the, uh, on the latter spectrum. I don't want to be anywhere close to Stalin. I want to be the exact opposite of that. I want to do things that are good because I do think, I do think we are here for some purpose that is greater than just this. Hmm. Well, that's a, uh, I'm with you, bro. Right on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so look, uh, why don't you why don't you tell people where they can find you where they can find your products that kind of thing and we can uh, we can ride this bad boy home. Yeah, well, um, anybody that's interested, noble-body.com, and I have some pretty great stuff on there. There's going to be more coming in the future too, and um, I read every email and I respond to as many as I can. I get a lot of messages and DMs. I try to respond to absolutely everything. Um, I do see the emails that come from the site. They are routed to me and some other people, but I read every single one of them and I usually respond myself. So if anybody has any questions, I'm readily accessible about anything. Life, um, love, the pursuit of happiness, the universe, cosmetic products, whatever. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming back on. It was a great conversation. I mean, we kind of, it's nice having a little bit of rapport already. We just kind of jumped into the nature of existence, man. <laughs> yeah, this was completely unscripted. And yeah. uh, we sat down and we did it. So yeah, I'd love to come on. Maybe we should do it like every three months, like uh, be like a quarterly review. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good to me, man. You're always welcome back on. All right, man. I love you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I love you too. And thanks for coming on. And folks, on that note, this has been the Logo Centrifugal Podcast. I have been Chance Lunsford. He's been Johnny Noble. This has all been Allegedly, and we're out.